Megadeth bassist David Ellefson was asked by HM on why he opted for a pick instead of playing bass with his fingers, to which he replied. Well, when I very first started I played with fingers. Then I pretty quickly moved to a pick because it helped me play louder and cleaner and clearer so I could be heard through the guitars. And to me it wasn't, he plays with picks. What would it be like if he played with fingers? I just wanted to be more versatile versus the funk techniques which had no place in any music that I write. I wanted to be skilled as a bass player, so I learned all kinds of stuff, fretless, different things. When we started Megadeth I was predominantly doing finger stuff. But I realized as the tempo sped up, the pick, grooved better with the drums. I was actually able to put guitar parts, and the guitar parts were played with a pick. And I was very comfortable with it. I'm not a snob, whatever is required for a song that's what you should use. David Ellefson looked back at Megadeth's 2013 album Super Collider, saying that the record's mixed reviews could have been significantly avoided simply by releasing a heavier lead single. He explained to Overdrive. Super Collider was a lot like 1999's Risk, in the sense that we went straight into the studio off the back of 13 with no break, and I think personally it was too soon. But there was nothing we could do, as management had tour dates booked, so we kind of backed ourselves into a corner, and while that worked for us on 13, it really caught us off guard on Super Collider. Looking back, the first single off Super Collider was too light and I really think we should have come out of the gate with a heavier song choice. Once fans hear a lighter track, they become prejudiced towards the whole record and the mindset is almost set in stone from that moment onwards, kind of like a first impressions last forever type scenario. There were some great songs on that album but what we learned about Dystopia was that we had to take some time off to really give it 100% and do things the way we want to do them. So no tours booked, no other commitments, just a total undisturbed focus on the task at hand. Taking this approach really proved to be very successful for us and we will be working to this format going forward. While talking to Chaos TV, Megadeth mastermind Mr. Dave Mustaine was asked about how he reacted to Slayer calling it quits and going on their last tour. He replied saying, Well, part of me is sad because they're my friends and they're a great band. The touring world is gonna be losing a terrific group of entertainers. Part of me is very happy because I know that Tom Araya wants to be a husband and a dad and wants to be home. I know he also had the same surgery that I did on his neck. So I know it can't be enjoyable for him. It's not enjoyable for me, it hurts when I play. And it's not getting any better. So I understand. I'm not ready to retire yet. I was before the surgery happened. After the surgery it got better for a little while and then it kind of got worse again. But at this point right now I'm not even thinking about it. I'm trying to push that in my mind. And now, if the opportunity comes up with the Slayer guys before they retire. Or take a break. They may be on one of those Ozzy Osbourne type tours where you have no more farewell tours. No shit, I'm serious this time. I'm going away tours. If they do that, yeah, it'd be great to go out and play with them again. I've always loved playing with those guys. If it's not and they keep charging on, great. Looking back on his past regrets in life, Megadeth mastermind Dave Mustaine singled out a few events he's not too proud of, one of them being punching fellow frontman James Hatfield of Metallica back in the day. You look back in hindsight and you think, God, I probably should have done that differently. But, see, that's the importance of when you have someone in your life as a role model to help you. There's an ancient Asian proverb that says, a smart man learns from his mistakes, but a wise man learns from the mistakes of others. Who knows? That may be from the book of Proverbs, I don't know where it originated from. But I would rather learn from your mistakes than my mistakes, because it's less painful that way. I think that, because I've shared my life and a lot of the things that I've done right and wrong, it's helped a lot of our fans in their personal lives, and definitely a lot of musicians too. Because, I mean, I've been doing this for 30 years, and it's fairly obvious to anybody that has a brain that people have been trying to hold me back," he added. A few years back, Dave explained the early day Metallica fight and how he turned James' mouth into a pile of bloody sheiklets. An excerpt from Dave Mustaine's autobiography called Mustaine, a heavy metal memoir. The excerpt is where Mustaine discussed the punch that led to Metallica firing him. This is what he wrote. The actual fight didn't happen right there. They call it a hang fire, like when there's an unexpected delay between the trigger of a gun being pulled and the actual discharge of the weapon. You know it's coming, and there's no stopping it. 
It's just a matter of time. James and I alternately cursed at each other and refused to speak until eventually we were both in Ron's house, preparing to rehearse, and tension spoiled over. There was another round of accusations and insults, more cursing, more threats. You keep talking like that, I'm going to punch you in the mouth, I said. In the middle of this exchange, Ron walked out of the bathroom and into the living room. He and James went way back, and despite the fact that James often treated him like shit, Ron instinctively defended his friend. You hit him, you'll have to hit me first. Shut up and sit the fuck down, I said. And then James jumped to Ron's defense. You touch him, you're going to have to hit me first. Jesus, I thought, what is this, some kind of fucking game show? I realized I would have to make a decision. Okay, you win, I said, and with that I threw a right cross that landed flush against James' face, turning his mouth into a pile of bloody sheiklets. In an interesting interview, Total Guitar caught up with Megadeth frontman Dave Mustaine talking about the album P Cells, but who's buying, and how he does not like playing certain songs because they contain black magic. He said, performance-wise, The Conjuring is one of the heaviest songs on the record, but unfortunately it's got black magic in it, and I promised that I wouldn't play it anymore because there's a lot of instructions for hexes in that song. Although it seems kind of corny, anybody who's a Wiccan or a warlock or anything like that will know that all of that stuff is instrumental. When I got into black magic I put a couple of spells on people when I was a teenager, and it haunted me forever, and I've had so much torment. People say, God damn, Dave never gets a break, he's had such a hard life, and I just think, no, Dave didn't, he got into black magic, and it's ruined his life. It wasn't that I was a bad guy. Or that I had a big mouth, it was that I got into witchcraft and black magic, and it's ruined my life. Fortunately for me, with all the work and the love of my friends, and not giving up with my guitar playing, I got over it. So I look back now and I think, hmm, I don't want to play The Conjuring, I look at songs like Black Friday and I think that would be a good song to play, too, but I look at the lyrics, which are about a homicidal madman who goes on a killing spree. Now, the irony of all of this is that I said I wasn't going to play it, but we've got the 25-year anniversary coming up and people are saying we have to do this record. And I'm thinking that I can't possibly do that and stay true to myself. But I'm sure where there's a will there's a way. When I first got saved about 10 years ago, I was really scared, and I was basically holding on to anything that I heard in church, or whatever, but as I've grown on I've learned a lot and lightened up a lot, and I see people around me doing certain things, and instead of me saying man, you shouldn't do that. I think quietly to myself, dude, you don't know what you're doing, it's a huge growth process. Dave Mustaine discussed Marty Friedman's departure from Megadeth, telling Axis, one of the main reasons Marty Friedman left Megadeth was because of the solo in Breadline off 1999's Risk. That was a song where Marty wanted to do the solo so badly. And he did, but when we got the song back our management said, we don't like the solo. Marty was already gone, so I agreed to redo it. But I told them they'd have to tell Marty they didn't like his solo and wanted it redone because I knew it was gonna cause problems. So then we're sitting in the control room and the song comes on. Everyone's there, we're all excited. I'm fat, dumb, and happy because I think they told Marty it would be my solo, not his. So the song comes up and there's my solo. Dave Ellefson and I look over at Marty and he's got tears coming down his face. I was like, oh my god. You didn't tell him. I felt terrible. Those are the little things that just fuck everything up. People don't see that part of it. They think it's my fault. I mean sure, I had a part in it, yeah. But who forgot to tell him? Dave Mustaine also talked about all the lineup changes Megadeth went through over the years, saying that Marty Friedman had a nervous breakdown when leaving Megadeth. It's no fun having to replace musicians. It's hard because, Along with having to replace the person in the band, you usually end up having the personality loss. And very rarely do guys leave on good terms. Marty Friedman had a nervous breakdown and he quit. And I remember, it was like did I do this? And David Ellefson has told me after the fact everything that was going on with Marty before that happened, so I'm very happy to know it wasn't me. And a lot of the other guys, when you have to let them go, 
you know, it's really hard to fire somebody and remain friends with them. Unfortunately we had to let some guys go. It's not because I don't love them, and it's not because they're not good. It's because what our vision was, was not a common goal anymore. I mean there were a couple of situations where one guy called up my fiancé and said, I fantasize about being with you when I'm with my girlfriend. And I thought, oh, you're fired. Giving the new metal genre quite a bashing, Megadeth frontman Dave Mustaine noted he'd rather have his eyelids pulled out than listen to the popular late 90s style, new metal. Telling faster louder how happy he is for the new wave of modern musicians, calling them a new breed of players. With all these new vocal styles, Dave focused on the past, adding, they had this wave of metal that came through in the 90s, and it was called new metal, I don't know if you remember it, but it was so bad. I would have rather had my eyelids pulled out. Asked if it's Limp Biscuit and Linkin Park he's talking about, Mustaine explained, no no. I can't even remember their names. Linkin Park, those guys are good at what they do. I have no problems with those guys. But I wouldn't call them new metal. Pinpointing the groups he has issues with, he continued, I'm talking about the bands that wouldn't do guitar solos. Guys who get out there and they do rhythms and stuff but they'd never do a guitar solo. It's like, come on, play a solo. But apparently solos aren't cool. It's just funny because I come from the school of ACDC and Led Zeppelin and man, the riff had to be kick-ass, the lyrics had to make sense and when it was time for the solo, the solo had to rip your face off, Dave said. And hey I may not be part of the family anymore, right at the forefront, but I'm the crazy uncle. Dave Mustaine also let loose on new metal bands during an interview with Cry of the Wolf, saying, during that whole period a couple of years ago, when no one was doing guitar solos, we had a couple of bands go out with us, and I despised them. And the reason they went out with us was because the label said you need to do this. That was the worst part of my career during that whole new metal thing. You know there were no solos, because the guitar players weren't good enough to do solos. In an interview with the self-proclaimed libertarian Alex Jones on Infowars.com, Megadeth's Dave Mustaine opened up about his thoughts on playing with satanic bands. Dave Mustaine, a born Christian, talked about setting the ground rules on who he would or would not share the stage with. According to him he said, if I do play, there's certain things I kind of want to veer away from. I don't want to play with any satanic bands. He narrowed it down a bit further saying, I'll play with bands that have darkness in them because we all have a little darkness in us. Or we wouldn't be human. But guys that are confessed Satanists, I don't really have time for that. I can control my emotions because I know it's not the sinners, it's the sin. He also talked about his refusal to share the stage with the openly satanic Swedish metal act dissection at an Israeli festival back in 2005, saying, The truth of the matter is, is that when I first had gotten you know, my life back in order back in 2002. I had made some changes. You know, I, I uh, had a, a severe injury to my arm, and when my career had stopped, it made me really take a hard, sideways look at everything. And I figured, you know what, just for now, because I don't really know a lot about what I'm doing, I want to make sure that I don't play with any bands that have junkies in them because I, I can't be around you know, guys that are doing heroin because of the temptation. Mm -hmm. And because, you know, I, I'm trying to have something in my life that is a power greater than myself so that I'll get myself back in, in, in shape. And um, I don't want to be hanging around with guys that are going to, you know, be uh, dangerous for me spiritually because I had just decided that, you know, I was going to start following um, a spiritual path. I figured, you know what, I, I don't want to go back, because I was into witchcraft and black magic and everything like that, so I know about that stuff, and I figured, you know what, I'm just going to try and avoid that stuff. Never said that I hated anybody, just, just didn't want to play with them, and, and I was so curious to see the uh, poster for the concert, because it was written in, in you know, the Hebrew font, or script, whatever you call it, and then I saw the band Dissection, and I, and I thought, well, that's a cool name, and I looked it up, and I went, uh-oh. So uh, I told the promoter, I said, look, we can't play. We're, we're, we're not going to play that festival. I never said kick them off. Well, yeah, of that course, of course, yeah, yeah. That was the promoter's mistake. The promoter kicked them off. And it's hard enough as it is in music to get concerts, so I would never kick a band off one of my shows.
Yeah, yeah, um, for I would sure. rather me not do it. And and when I said, look, we don't we don't want to do it, they they unfortunately harmed that band. Regardless whether the guy was a convicted murderer, he was a satanic uh, uh, person. You know, we all have a little bit of darkness in us. Now, I've never killed anybody. You know, killed a couple of guitars, but <laughs> you know, I've never <laughs> killed anybody. And and you know, the sad thing is, at the end of the day, the poor guy had committed suicide. So you know, he was a tortured soul. And, and I yeah. know that for me, the reason that I turned to black magic and witchcraft and stuff like that was I had had uh, spiritual abuse and and. Um, so many things had been done wrong in my life, and there was so much hypocrisy with the people that had said that they were Christians and, or you know, whatever, Catholic, whatever. The people in my life, and they would say one thing and they would do something else. So I really regretted um, having spent any time in a church, and I really resented people who said that they believed in God because you would see them do one thing, and then the next day they would, you know, they would do something else, and, and it's just very confusing as a kid. And I think that's why a lot of us end up, you know, being spiritually misled. Probably part of the reason why that poor chap did that too. But, you know, um, we we were supposed to play a show with them in, in France and they didn't get kicked off that show. You know, a lot of stuff went around about another band that, that had a name that, you know, was kind of offensive to me. But, you know, that, that's that's a personal thing. It has nothing to do with their band, their, their quality of music. Yeah, but, but you, can expect, you can expect the, 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 produ the producer of a show to, to, to cancel Megadeth when he, it's standing, it, like, right opposed to, to Dissection or Rotting Christ. Because, like, those are little bands and Megadeth is... You know, that's that's a Megadeth. huge band. That, that that's Megadeth. You know, so I know, but but, but guys, what you got to understand is my heart for those guys has nothing to do. You know, my decision not to play with them doesn't have anything to do with their value and worth as people because I'm sure they're they're probably really great people. Sometimes we name our band stuff to get a reaction out of people, and it's not really who or what we are. And you know, there there are bummers. There are uh, consequences. Naming Megadeth, Megadeth. I can't even tell you how offensive it was. Uh, there's a huge radio station in Los Angeles called KLOS, and we had done a song, and after the song was over, they go, and that was a cover of an old Alice Cooper song coming up next. They didn't even say our name. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't say Megadeth on the radio. So, yes. has not, you know, it has nothing to do with, with the, the person's worth or anything like that, because okay. I believe we're all valuable, and, and you know, it's just, just a personal preference that I had at the time. I, I've learned a lot more now, so, you know, if the opportunity came up to play with bands that, that were you know, contrary to what my you know, personal, political, spiritual, or, or, or any kind of moral values that I have, you know, that's something between me and my relationship with God, and, and you know, I don't push that on anybody anymore. At the beginning, you know, I, I didn't know, and I wanted to play it safe. And I think that anybody who would judge me and say, oh, well, you know what, Dave made a huge mistake. He just joined a new club, and he didn't know all the rules, so instead of breaking the rules, he said, fuck you to everybody. That's not me, man. I like to do things right. So I played it safe. I learned a lot about it, and I, you know, I've opened my mind up to it.